The song my saddle sings to me While I ride and rock in my saddle I hear this haunting melody Oh, ride me easy, cowboy Oh, try and treat me right The road is long and lonely And I'm your home tonight Let me sing my song of the saddle My saddle's haunting melody Oh, I'll sing you the song of the saddle Sings the song to me. Yes, so ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Crunchies plays no favorites. It's a Democrat of breakfast food. Why it makes the kitties grow so fast, would you believe it, folks? They eat it before breakfast, at sundown they need a shave. <laughs> <laughs> Say, where is this guy, Austin? Here it is, ten seconds ago, and he's out kissing cows. So ladies and gentlemen, Carlos Crunchies are good for you. They're tempting, nourishing, the TNT of breakfast food. Uh-uh, yes, sir. And they now present to you, from a coast-to-coast -coast shortwave broadcast, the one and only Gene Austin. Oh, I'm a root and shoot tip man from Texas. I'm a howling coyote, I'm telling you. When I get good and plastered on carbolic acid, I can tear a rattlesnake in two. <laughs> I around me a dozen. They seem to go for everything I do. I whoop them and I beat them. That's the way you've got to treat them. You want to make a lady fall for you. Now when I'm on the prod and start prowling, the sheriffs put their badges on the shelf. And though they all detest me, they never do arrest me. Till I get mad and arrest myself myself. Now when I eat, I pick my teeth with cactus And smoke a stick of dynamite or two I love to be a buddy Cause I'm wild and woolly You ain't telling me, I'm telling you Ole, ole, to my boy when you were up and static. He isn't your boy legally. Well, who cares about that? I raised him, didn't I? And he's my boy as far as feelings go. <laughs> oh, so shut up. Hey, can't a fella take a little cough medicine without being interrupted by you, you old fossil? When I get sick, I'll put it away then. I want to thank you, folks. You know, I'm kind of excited today because I'm getting close to home. I was born and raised right down here around Sage Junction. I'm going to let you in on a little something. You know, I don't remember my real parents, but there's a fella down there named Charlie Turner. Pop, I always call him, because he raised me. He gave me the money to go east and make good with my singing on the radio. Now I want to sing a little song for Pop. The best friend a boy ever had and the only daddy I've ever known. I want to sing his little favorite song. I hope you're listening, Pop, because I'm coming home. Don't you weep anymore for me tonight. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Don't you wait up tonight by the candlelight. I'm now, what's going on in that honorary old head of yours now? I'm coming home. I was just thinking, Jed, wouldn't it be wonderful if Carol could be here when he arrives? Hmm. My granddaughter and Jean. What a match that would be. Charlie, as much as I hate to agree with you, I must admit it would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm coming home. You know I never turn off Gene's program. I'm here on business. Mm, that's a pretty nasty way to talk to a man you're working for. Working for? <laughs> you haven't paid me any wages in six months. Well, Rocky, you know, things ain't been so good lately. I know all about you losing cattle. I'm not here to ask you for money. I'm here to give you some. What's that? Oh, don't look so funny. I met up with the boys and had a little game of cards. And won $3,000. Ah, oh, no, there ain't that much money outside of the New Deal. No? Well, here it is in cash. Now, all you've got to do is sign over the deed to the ranch to me, and it's yours, Pop, including the back wages. Go on and take it, Pop, before the young man wakes up. You mean you want to buy my ranch? That's what I said, and I'm offering you more than it's worth. Hmm. It is to me, Rocky, that... Uh, you're the fellas always saying that this property is good for nothing. And now you want to buy it. Why? Go on and get the deed, Pop. Me being your lawyer, I'll make the transaction legal. I want you to know, Rocky, that I appreciate your offer. But you see, the ranch is all I've got. And I don't think I could part with it. Then you refuse? Yep, I'm afraid I do. Look here, Turner. You can't fool around with me. Either you sell me the place, or pay me. I'm tired of waiting. But Rocky can't give you what I haven't got. My offer stands good until tomorrow. After that, I want my back salary, or I'll take it up in court. I'll never make up my mind to the sale, Rocky. But I'll do the best I can about your wages. You razor backed old hog. Have you completely lost what few brains you have in that shallow head of yours? Hey, you'll never get another offer like that. Hmm, I think that feller must have been smoking loco weed or something. I don't think so. All right, Rocky, speak up. It's Mr. Falcon. He's going to build the road for us. How are you? How'd it do? Well, boss, this is one time you guessed wrong. Old Pop Turner wouldn't sell that ranch. He'd lose it right on. Did you show him the money? Yeah. And he didn't even bat an eyelash. I told you we'd run across one of those ranchers who wouldn't sell. We better try and buy the right away from him direct. I don't give up so easily. Selling the right away is only going to be part of the profit in this deal. Once that highway's built across those properties, every acre of that land's gonna be worth plenty of money. Why, the whole town will move in that direction. And when it does, people are going to buy land. And when they buy, it will be from George Morrow and no one else. Understand? But Morrow, 
Don't you realize that that road is a relief measure to put unemployed men to work? We can't keep it a secret much longer. We've managed to do it so far. I'm not going to play around with Pop Turner. He's going to sell or else. Well, I won't be a party to any law breaking. You forget, Falcon, that I could ruin you with very little trouble. You weren't always a contractor, you know. So what? I served my time, and I've been going straight. Sure. But folks around here are just a little bit suspicious about ex-convicts, especially when the charge against them was forgery. All right. I'll string along. But you've got to make it fast. Leave that to me. I'll see you at the hotel. Oh, by the way, did Pop say anything about the wages he owed you? Oh, he said he'd try and dig up the money somewhere or the other. You know, Rocky, I just found out that Pop never made out a will. Is that so? Yes. Let me see. Wasn't I present when he told you that he'd leave you the ranch in case anything happened to him before the debt was paid? Huh? Oh, uh, did he say that? Well, yes, I'm sure he did. A couple of the boys were there from my ranch at the time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, they were, that's right. Well, old boy, today's the day. We're just getting town in time to see Gene driving with his big bus, making us both mighty proud of This is the place, all right. Old Pop Turner hasn't missed passing that spot for the last 20 years on his way to town. It's too bad to have to bump off Pop on the days to welcome that radio cowboy into town. Did you ever meet the guy, Rocky? No. I came to work for Pop after Austin went east. Wish it was him we was after. You know, my girl can't talk about anything but his voice. You're lucky to have a girl that can talk. Mine can't do anything but giggle. Uh, keep your mind on your work. We've got to make a clean job of this. If I'm any judge, Ma don't like any mistakes. You said it, Rocky. Here's Pop now. You never would get him. 
Well, the horse will get out all right. The pup's as dead as a mackerel. Yeah, but you got him. Yeah. I got him. Poor old pup. It sure was a bad accident. Yeah, too bad he had to fall like that. me. Hurry up, Lucy, my charming little nightingale. It's too hot to be holding this rope all day. Jed Hill, it was your idea to hang this dang thing up. So if you want it up before Pop gets into town, I reckon you better talk less and pull harder. There you are, my beautiful little hummingbird. Hello, Jed. Hi, Sheriff. Getting ready for the celebration? Yeah. I reckon a lot of folks will show up. It's a nice sign. Oh, it's just a little old something that I painted up while waiting for my coffee to boil. Hey, Sherry. Uh, sure. I was just thinking the same thing. What's wrong? I'm out there surrounded by wild animals. They're trying to dig in. Oh, nonsense. That's just your imagination. No, I swear to... <laughs> Why, that's nothing but an old coyote. He wouldn't bite you. But I tell you, they're trying to dig in. Please, may I stay here with you? I can't sleep. There, there, now. What'll make you feel a little easier? I know I'll play a little music, sing a song, scare the old coyote away. But why? 
Carol, I can explain the whole thing. Why, you... And therefore I, Charles L. Turner, being to the best of my knowledge of sound mind and body, herewith bequeath all my worldly goods and chattels to be divided equally by and between my only living relative, Carol Turner and Jean Austin. The aforesaid individuals upon my death are to take possession of my property to share and share alike all the assets thereof after my just debts have been paid. Signed, Charles L. Turner. The will has been properly witnessed and notarized. Are there any creditors? Your Honor, I paid all the outstanding debts. I beg your pardon, Mr. Austin, but here's one you didn't pay. Your Honor, the bank holds an unpaid note of Turner's, the principal of which amounts to $5,000. $5,000? That's a lie. Pop Turner never borrowed that much money in his life. You're very much mistaken, Mr. Hill. Turner borrowed that money less than two months ago. No such thing. I've been, I mean, I was his lawyer for 30 years. He told me everything. The signatures on the note and on the will appear to be identical. They match, all right. I don't care, it's a deliberate forgery. Your Honor. Mr. Hill, you'll have to prove that charge. I can prove it, and I will prove it. I'll get the best detectives. I'll get handwriting experts. I, oh, I want a drink. There'll be no drink served here till after court's adjourned. Now, Your Honor, the bank doesn't wish to be hard about this matter. Perhaps some of the heirs can discharge the obligation. Well, I haven't that much money. I'd be glad to assume the debt if you'll accept my signature. Not without security, Mr. Austin. What security did Pop have? At the time Turner borrowed the money, the ranch was worth that amount. Why didn't you mention this note the other night when I paid Rocky Renault in your presence? I don't conduct the bank's business after hours. You mean you dug up this forgery after your other schemes failed? Your Honor, I refuse to stand here and be insulted. And I demand that the Turner property be turned over to the sheriff and sold to satisfy this debt. And I demand a complete investigation of Morrow and all his activities. I think he's a crook. Restrain yourself, Mr. Austin, or I'll cite you for contempt. If you can produce evidence of forgery, the court will take the proper action. In the meantime, you and Miss Turner must vacate the ranch and place the assets in the hands of the sheriff. That's all. Court's adjourned. Well, what do you say now, Maura? You're a pretty good penman. It won't be long before you'll be building the road, and we'll be cashing in. He must have got my signature off a canceled check. Well, I was always careless about picking them up. Yeah. There's only one thing to do, and that's to trace the forgery. We'll have to prove it. Give me a gun. I'll make Mara talk. You sat down, will you? That was all in jail for probating a false will. And I'll go to jail before I let a gang of crooks steal everything I've got. Why, if I show them I ain't dead, they'll start running for holes like rat. No, Pop, show your face and one of Morrow's men will kill you before you open your mouth. It's not just your ranch we're fighting for now, it's every ranch in this part of the country. They're all in the hands of Morrow's men. I believe that Morrow got that property in direct violation of the law. Now, if we can prove it, we can challenge those sales and wipe out Mara. Then we can see if those ranchers get everything that's coming to them. Well? It's me, Lucy. It's Lucy. Ah, that crazy girl will be seen coming here yet. Hi, Mr. Ghost. Is it hot down there where you're supposed to be? All right, Lucy, what did you find out? Well, you told me to hang around the telegraph office and try to read any wires that come from Mara or Falcon. Here's one to Mara I copied down. I had to promise old Perkins a kiss to get him to let me read over his shoulder. 
Hey, listen to this. Regarding highway construction, stop. Impossible, comply with your request, stop. Information must appear in public print at once. It's signed Kelly. Highway construction? Gee, you were right. Lucy, you've done a fine job, but there's more to do. You mean I have to go back to that yes. telegraph office? Oh, Jean, if I have to kiss old Perkins, I'll be sick for a week. This means Morrow has used his influence to keep a public project a secret, a highway. All right, we'll see Judge Harrison about that. No, from the way this wire's worded, we can't prove a thing. But there is a way to prove it. How? By getting a hold of Morrow's private correspondence. Oh, I fell down and broke my heart in two Now you've got me crying over you I never was lonely Till you came along Now you've got me singing the blues All day long I fell down and broke my heart in two When I tripped and stumbled into you I was excited and you were delighted Just like a couple of school kids Darling, won't you tell me what to do? Cause I fell down and broke my heart Well, I'd like to spend the evening with you charming people, but we have a broadcast coming up, and the boys need a rehearsal. <clears throat> well, uh, couldn't you uh, bring them over here? I better not. I'm afraid we wouldn't get much work done. Well, I'll just clear off the table, and I'll go to the door with you, Jean. Mighty fine little girl, but she cramps my style. She stays around here much longer, she's gonna reform me. How? Too neat. You know, I just get so I can't leave a little nip anywhere. Listen, my boy, you gotta be mighty careful getting in tomorrow's office. Say, listen, you realize, don't you, that you're robbing a bank? Here are the keys. Where'd you get the keys? I don't know, I just put my hand in my pocket and there they were. <laughs> Boston's in the bank. What? In the bank? Boys? We'll take a walk. Clinker, get the sheriff. Get your men set, Rocky. Boys? Four of you go to the side of the bank. The rest come on the other side.
Search him before the sheriff gets here. Do you realize the penalty for bank robbing Austin? There's your man, Sheriff. Well, what have you got to save yourself, Austin? Nothing, nothing at all, Sheriff. thinks he can get away with this, huh? Stay with me, Steve.
on out, Austin. You're cornered. Come in and get me, Sheriff. If you don't, I will. Come on. Hold it, Sheriff. You know this is Falcon's room, don't you? Yes. All right, walk over there to that desk. Now pick up that blotter. Hold it up the mirror. What do you see? Pop Turner's signature. Several of them. Yeah, and every one a forgery. And Falcon forged the Morrow note. Now, nah, Sheriff, you're beginning to catch on. But I can never make Judge Harrison believe that. But as a police officer, you'll make a fine witness. All right, Austin. Hold it. Austin's clear. Everything checks, even to his reason for breaking into the bank. Thanks, Sheriff. It might be a good idea to let the people on the street think you've captured me. You see, one of Morrow's men might get a little excited and start shooting. Right. Drop in between us. Judge, there's some things you can do to avoid some very bad publicity. What do you mean? You refuse me bail. That's within the power of my office. Yes, well, there's a lot of people in this town want to know which side of the fence you're on. You might begin right now by signing this writ. Right there. Right. Better sign it, Judge. Uh, right. Sensible thing to do, Judge. Why, sure. I'd, I'd be glad to. Will this definitely put a stop to the highway going through? Yes, the whole matter will be thoroughly investigated as soon as Morrow and Falcon are in custody. Let's go, Sheriff. No, Gene. I've got to stay here and get Morrow and all his private records. Well, this writ has to be served by an officer. Hold up your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to uphold the laws of this county? I do. so you'll be here when I get back. How long will it take to cut this road through? couple of months. Hey, Smitty! Take that Dozier and knock that Turner fence down. You mean the Morrow fence, don't you, Falcon? Right. They cut that road right through this front yard. Yeah. The boss ain't been selling much land. Yeah, he wants to wait until the road's finished. It's worth more then. He expects to clean up. He's got plenty invested here. Hey, look who's riding this way. Why, it's Austin. Falcon. 
All construction work must stop pending investigation. Jailbirds can't serve writs, Austin. I'm a special officer, Mara. You and Falcon are under arrest for forgery. What's this mean, boss? Means that all of these men are thrown out of a job. Yeah? Who says so? This guy's a crook, man. How he got away with this, I don't know. This is nothing but a legal trick to stop work on the road. Not a few men say this writ was never served. I wouldn't let him get away with it. Throw him off the property. What do you say, man? Come on, back, man. You can't get away with this. Come on, and grab Who says he can? I say he We want justice, and the courts will see that we get it. And we're going to see that you build the roads. You boys will be safer in town. Let me sing my song of the saddle, the 
song my saddle sings. Little Charles. From the looks well, of the I currency on hand, I would unhesitatingly exclaim that uh, business must be pretty good. I hear those, if those lots. Is he selling many lots? Right, is he selling many lots? Easy, ah. <laughs> Tell him, Pop. All except one. Yeah. Right. That's the, uh, the one the house sets on. Hmm? I save him that one. And I'm your home. I still have hopes. Let me sing no. my song of yes. the saddle. My saddle's haughty melody. Oh, I'll sing you the song of the saddle. The way my saddle sings the song to me.